ID the Future, a podcast about evolution and intelligent design. Welcome to ID the Future. I'm Andrew McDermott. Today, I'd like to read for you an excerpt from the new book, The Big Bang Revolutionaries, the untold story of three scientists who re-enchanted cosmology by Jean-Pierre Luminet. The book is published by Discovery Institute Press. Luminet is a French astrophysicist specialising in black holes and cosmology. He is Emeritus Research Director at the French National Centre for Scientific Research. He is a member of the Astrophysics Laboratory of Marseille and the Universe and Theories Laboratory in Paris. Luminet has been awarded several prizes, including the Georges Lemaitre Prize for his work in cosmology, the UNESCO Kalinga Prize, and the Einstein Medal for the Popularization of Science. He has published more than 20 science books, eight historical novels, and eight poetry collections. The asteroid 5523 Luminae was named in his honor. Many widely read scientific writers of our day mistakenly attribute the concepts of the expanding universe and the Big Bang to Edwin Hubble and Albert Einstein. Hubble did provide evidence of an expanding universe, but he neither discovered such evidence nor accepted the radical idea that space itself was expanding. As for Einstein, he held out against the idea of an expanding universe for more than a decade and ceased working in the field as soon as he had to amend his view. The real heroes of the Big Bang Revolution are the Russian Alexander Friedman and Belgian priest Georges Lemaitre. That they are virtually unknown to the general public is one thing. That their contribution is underestimated by astrophysicists and cosmologists is quite another, for the concepts they promulgated are among the most remarkable achievements of 20th century science. The Big Bang Revolutionaries amends the record, telling the remarkable story of how these two men, joined by the mischievous George Gamma and in the face of conventional scientific wisdom, offered a compelling view of a singular creation of the universe in what Lemaitre termed a primeval atom. I like to start readings like these by sharing a few endorsements the book has received. The Big Bang Revolutionaries has received praise from three Nobel Prize laureates. Roger Penrose is the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2020. He is Emeritus Rouse Ball Professor of Mathematics at the Mathematical Institute of the University of Oxford, as well as Emeritus Fellow of Wadham College at Oxford and a Fellow of the Royal Society. Of the Big Bang Revolutionaries, Penrose writes, This excellent and well-illustrated book convincingly puts into a clear focus the key original contributions of Friedman and Lemaitre in the early 20th century revolution in our understanding of the large-scale physical universe. Jim Peebles won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2019 and is the Albert Einstein Professor in Science Emeritus at Princeton University. Peebles writes, the author brings together many aspects of thinking about the large-scale nature of our world from the points of view of concepts, theory, observation, and culture. The account starts with Albert Einstein's thought that a philosophically satisfactory universe has no boundary, a bold conjecture that proved to fit well with Einstein's new gravity theory and now agrees with the observational evidence. You will find fascinating details of the evolution of ideas, evidence and the cultural situation between that time and the early steps by which George Gamow's brilliant intuition took him to the realization that an even better picture of our universe is that it expanded from a hot, dense state. Michael Mayer is a Swiss astrophysicist and professor emeritus at the University of Geneva, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2019. Mayer writes this, The 20th century represents an exceptional period in the study of the cosmos. But this century will be remembered above all as the one in which physics, for the first time, made it possible to study the universe and its evolution. Jean-Pierre Luminet, an eminent cosmologist, takes the role of historian in this analysis of the emergence of ideas and pays tribute to the physicists who contributed to this dizzying scientific adventure. Philosopher of science Dr. Stephen Meyer has also praised the book. In his latest book, Return of the God Hypothesis, Meyer tells the fascinating story of the scientists who discovered that the universe had a beginning. Of Luminet's book, Meyer writes this, The Big Bang Revolutionaries is invaluable reading for anyone fascinated by the history of the big ideas that have shaped and reshaped Western science and civilization. 
and for anyone who wants a front row seat to witness the all too common character of scientific revolution. Messy, full of unexpected twists and turns, and not without its casualties. In the present case, and as Lumine dramatically shows, the revolution occurred in the face of sustained prejudice from some of the finest minds in physics and astronomy. As for the wider implications of the Big Bang Revolution, Lumine leaves those for the reader to contemplate. I will read from Chapter 1 of The Big Bang Revolutionaries. It's called A Cosmological Crisis, 1925 to 1935. We've got to live, no matter how many skies have fallen. D. H. Lawrence, Lady Chatterley's Lover, 1928. So wrote Lawrence in the first paragraph of his novel, summarizing what he called the position of his heroine, and what he took to be that of the Western world more broadly, in the years following the devastation of World War I. The statement captures well two events that took place between 1925 and 1935, when the skies seemed to fall in both an economic crisis and a cosmological crisis. Both were unpredicted, and both, in their different ways, were brutal. In retrospect, there were a few hints of the coming crises, but the significance of these went undetected. An Economic Crisis In October 1929, after a long period of prosperity, the American stock market experienced a spectacular collapse. The economic and industrial situation worsened rapidly, and the crisis spread to other industrialized countries. Seeing their financial world dissolve overnight, dozens of businessmen took their own lives. Millions of people were put out of work. It would take nearly a decade to redress the situation. Not as dramatic and affecting only the small world of theoretical physicists and advanced astronomers, the crisis in cosmology was roughly simultaneous with the events that began with Wall Street's Great Crash. It was what philosopher of science Thomas Kuhn calls a scientific revolution. A scientific revolution occurs when a widely held picture of the universe undergoes a fundamental transformation. Kuhn observed that as time goes by, some scientific theories come to be regarded as secure, and consequently are no longer subject to rigorous scrutiny. Accepted as a whole, each such theory comes to constitute a paradigm, namely a doctrine backed by consensus. The sciences, for this reason, rarely experience revolutions. Every scientific field, biology, chemistry, cosmology, reflects a specific corpus of knowledge accumulated over many years of observation, documentation, and experimentation. This corpus resists change. Cosmological Paradigm Shifts In the field of cosmology, it is generally admitted that our picture of the universe has undergone just three fundamental paradigm shifts. The Copernican Galilean, the Newtonian, and the Einsteinian revolutions. Today, it is possible that we are living through what will be recognized someday as a fourth cosmological revolution, with the appearance of new theoretical models based on quantum gravity. However, in the absence of experimental verification and formal completeness, none of the new approaches, superstring theory, loop quantum gravity, non-commutative geometry, emergent gravity, etc., is guaranteed to be successful. Only time will tell if a fourth cosmological revolution is in the making. To better understand how scientific paradigms shift, let's look briefly at the Copernican-Galilean Revolution. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus published De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, in which he promoted the heliocentric theory, an alternative model of the universe to Ptolemy's geocentric system. In 1572, a new star appeared in the constellation of Cassiopeia, Meticulously observed by the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe, it cast doubt on the Aristotelian dogma of the immutability of the stars. In 1600, Giordano Bruno was condemned by the Inquisition for having affirmed the infinity of space, the plurality of inhabited worlds, and other ideas considered theological heresies. In 1609, Johannes Kepler, having analyzed Tycho Brahe's planetary data, had to abandon the paradigm of circular perfection and described planetary trajectories in terms of ellipses. Finally, in 1610, Galileo Galilei pointed a magnifying telescope towards the sky. He revealed for the first time the imperfection of the moon, studded with craters, and of the sun, covered with spots. 
These observations opened the way to a unified terrestrial and celestial physics. The cosmological revolution, spread over nearly a century, thus saw the fall of the closed Aristotelian Christian cosmos centered on the earth in favor of an enlarged, perhaps even infinite space in which the earth occupies only a marginal space. Scientific revolutions often seem to accompany social, political, or economic revolutions. Perhaps it takes a great upheaval in society for scientists to dare to rethink their inherited world picture. Conversely, a change of scientific paradigm generates, in a subtler and slower way, new thoughts in other fields, including philosophy and aesthetics. Thus, establishing the central position of the sun contributed to minimizing the importance of earthly or human affairs. This development could not leave philosophical and literary thought untouched. Recasting Physics If cosmological revolutions have so much cultural influence, it is because they recast fundamental physics. The Copernican Galilean Revolution led to the idea of unifying terrestrial and celestial physics, to the laws of planetary motion, and to the birth of mechanics. The Newtonian Cosmological Revolution, with its absolute infinite space and eternal time, within which the celestial bodies move, subject to universal attraction, accompanied the statement of the fundamental principles of dynamics and the definition of forces. The Einsteinian Cosmological Revolution was marked by the discovery of the expansion of the universe and the recognition that the cosmos emerged from a possible singular origin, now called the Big Bang. This latter paradigm shift, known as relativistic cosmology, had as its source the theory of general relativity, whose field equations were given by Albert Einstein and David Hilbert in 1915. The theory essentially reworks the concepts of space, time, light, and gravitation. In its current version, relativistic cosmology also rests, as the Belgian physicist and Catholic priest Georges Lemaitre predicted as early as 1931, on the other great pillar of modern physics, quantum mechanics, which by describing the interactions between elementary particles and electromagnetic waves, reshuffles the concepts of classical mechanics. Thus, the unfailing link between cosmology and fundamental physics does not facilitate the rapid assimilation of new cosmological paradigms. As far as the relativistic cosmological revolution is concerned, it took at least 30 years for a consensus, not unanimity, to begin to emerge among physicists. To effectively advance knowledge, scientific revolutions typically are followed by times of recasting, which allow for purification, provisional stabilization, and the reformulation of new theories. However, the image that cosmology offers today of the evolution of the universe is remarkably close in its fundamental concepts to the models initially proposed by the Russian physicist Alexander Friedman and especially by Georges Lemaitre, the true fathers of the Big Bang. The purpose of this book is not to exhaustively survey the history of cosmology through the centuries, nor that of the few decades that saw the development of relativistic cosmology. The available studies on the subject are numerous, and some are of high quality. I propose instead to present and analyze the texts that originated the three main ideas of relativistic cosmology. The expansion of the universe, a possible singular origin of the universe, the existence of a cosmic background radiation, a fossil memory of the origin. These texts are the work of three pioneers who, armed only with their pens and brilliant intuition, unveiled this new vision of the world. Alexander Friedman, who lived from 1888 to 1925, and Georges Lemaitre, 1894 to 1966, both mentioned already, as well as the Russian-American George Gamma, 1904 to 1968. At least three of their texts, the first published in 1922, the second in 1931, and the third in 1948, make them the real fathers of the Big Bang. That was an excerpt from Chapter 1 of The Big Bang Revolutionaries by Jean-Pierre Luminet. The book is now available from Discovery Institute Press. Get your own copy at discovery.press. That's discovery.press. For ID the Future, I'm Andrew McDermott. Thanks for listening. Visit us at idthefuture.com and intelligentdesign.org. 
This program is Copyright Discovery Institute and recorded by its Center for Science and Culture.